I want to talk about completely removing all animal products from your diet because I got a really good comment too in my comment section saying, you know, it's not just not eating enough plants that causes this gut dysbiosis. I, as a vegan, had issues as well. And I totally believe that. Um, I've heard numerous people account that they got, you know, things like SIBO from a vegan diet. And I think I'm on to why this happens. And again, it all comes down to we need plants and animals in our diet. And we need mostly plants and a little bit of animal food. And I will, again, show how this is, I think, what's the most important so anyway, how my vegan diet ruined my gut. Um, so this is a 12-year vegan. And after all that time, she developed SIBO, which is really interesting. Now, if you want to read this article, it's really good. You should. Um, I will link it below. So here's just a picture of her with her SIBO. <laughs> Does not look great. She obviously has a lot of swelling. So let's just look at her typical diet because vegans on my channel might be concerned, right? And might be saying, well, maybe it was what she ate. So here, breakfast was avocado on toast or rice cakes, sometimes overnight oats, protein powder, non-dairy milk, breakfast, lunch, um, beans, whole grains, quinoa spelt, barley, perhaps hummus, tahini, stir fry, tofu, curry, stew, um, the main vegetables she would eat were aubergine, which is eggplant, squash, courgette, which is zucchini, cabbage, greens, and tomatoes. Snacks would be fruit, small squares of chocolate, nut, protein bars. Like it sounds hummus. Sounds like she has a really, really good um, variety here. She has a really great variety. She's eating a lot of different things. So like people who watch my other videos would be like, what's she doing wrong then? I'll tell you. Throughout the day, um, she'd have endless herbal teas um, and limited caffeine. So she didn't even drink caffeine. This to me sounds like a really, really healthy vegan diet, right? I'm guessing she supplemented. But then she got a stool test. And this was the interesting part, you guys. She had a very prominent yeast overgrowth and was completely deficient in lactobacillus. Lactobacillus, the bacteria strain commonly found in dairy and meat. We'll go over this in a second. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. There's probably a lot of thoughts going on right now. Um, so lactobacillus um, keeps yeast from getting out of control. You need that lactobacillus in there. So obviously then this excess yeast is going to eat all those beautiful sugars you're eating <laughs> in your grains and your legumes and your fruit it's going to just feast and it's going to get out of control so here it says the deficiency in lactobacillus was equally worrying lactobacillus is thought to be an important strain of beneficial bacteria beneficial beneficial and it's mainly from meat okay let's just move on <laughs> Beneficial in the gut that helps to break down fiber and protein rich foods. It's also important for the protection of the gut wall, for the immune system, and for protection against organisms such as pathogenic bacteria and yeasts. This lactobacillus is important, okay? And as I'll show you in a second, meat eaters tend to be higher in lactobacillus. And so it's contributing to her yeast overgrowth. Lactobacillus deficiency makes it more difficult to break down fiber and lactose, leading to potentially further fermentation by other bacteria and an increased risk of gas and bloating. So she had a lactobacillus deficiency, deficiency from a vegan diet. So here's a study, the health advantage of a vegan diet exploring the gut microbiota connection. I'm not saying there's no advantage. There's tons of advantages of a vegan diet. Tons. Okay. It's going to lower your um, chances of getting certain diseases. Okay. It's going to ameliorate your gut microbiota 
profile. You're going to get a lot more beneficial bacteria. But too much of a good thing. Is there such thing as too much of a good thing? That's my little hypothesis here. Is the vegan gut profile unique? So they've been studying the vegan gut and here, um, and just like vegetarian and vegan guts in, in general. But here it says, for example, Reddy et al. found evidence that omnivores had an aerobic microflora enriched by bacteroides, bifidobacterium, peptococcus, and lactobacillus. This was the one she was deficient in when compared to non-meat eaters. Non-meat eaters. So this might, because it was back in like, it wasn't a recent study. It was back in the day. Um, they, they were maybe even just comparing them to, you know, someone who eats eggs and milk. I don't know. And then uh, in the 1980s, when vegan diets emerged, um, they were more studied here. And again, um, Van Frassen et al., found that subjects on a 20-day vegan diet um, showed lowest levels of lactobacilli. Lowest. They also had lower concentrations of bile acids. Interesting, because you're not going to be able to break things down if you don't have bile acids. Uh, coprostanol and coprostanol plus cholesterol. Okay. These results are notable in that the vegan diet produced a significantly different result than the lacto-ovo vegetarian diet, suggesting that a broad distinction, that's interesting, lacto-ovo had different, between meat and non-meat diets. So there's a difference between vegan and lacto-ovo, which, I mean, most people watching this channel, they know that. You know that, right? So what you may be thinking is you can get lactobacilli right on a vegan diet you can you absolutely can you can eat sauerkraut you can eat fermented stuff like um kombucha and kefir and all that stuff those are probably depending on your brand and what you're buying they're gonna have lactobacilli so it's not that you can't get it but you have to keep them in there happy and feed them you got to keep them in there so in my opinion, if you're on a vegan diet, you want to stay on a vegan diet, you might consider adding in these fermented foods as a regular staple to your diet, not just once in a while. If you're not vegan for ethical reasons, you could consider adding in a small amount of meat. And this is what I keep coming back to. I keep coming back to in, in you know, Paleolithic times, it looks as though, um, you know, Homo habilis and Homo erectus did not eat that much meat. They didn't eat that much meat. The the Blue Zones and Seventh-day, well, some of the Seventh-day Adventists and, and all those populations who are supposed long-lived centenarians, have the long, largest population of centenarians in the world, don't eat a ton of meat. They don't eat a ton. The Hadza do not eat a ton of meat. All of these populations don't eat that much. They eat a certain amount and then the rest is plants. And that's what I'm, that's my theory. <laughs> that's the whole thing that I keep coming back to is I believe that's the healthiest diet. And here, vegetarian diets, low meat diets and health, a review, 2012. And basically they're trying to see if low meat diet patterns have, implications in health and the conclusions are the benefits of vegetarian diets are not unique prudent plant-based dietary patterns which also allow small intakes of red meat fish and dairy products have demonstrated significant improvements in health status as well so plants in the diet do wonders but taking them completely out of the diet is a whole new ball game you have to basically come up with some kind of diet where you're going to replace all these missing nutrients as well as now we know microbiota your bacteria you're going to have to be replacing those and somehow keeping those going without their substrate which is meat their substrate is meat so you need a balance you can't just eat plants and you definitely can't just eat animal products but i'm not even going over that in this one <laughs> Um, I did a wall post on what happens to your microbiome when you go on carnivore diets, and it's not good. 
it looks like it causes even more intestinal issues like IBD and other problems. So that's what I think. To let me know what you think. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this theory of mine is just coming more and more into fruition, especially given like all the evidence from many different parts of science that plant-based diets with some animal products is ideal.